Alright, what's the word everybody? It's your boy Jay Sight, and I'm back today with another tutorial. And today I'm about to be showing y'all how to transform your green screen footage from this to this. And, and today we're going to be using software like After Effects and Blender. And if you have access to it, I believe we all can go get us the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you go get DaVinci Resolve, I'll show you exactly why you might need that as well. I just feel like using DaVinci Resolve is a little bit easier for one of these steps, but yeah, let's pull forward. So I already have a scene, I already have a composition where I'm keying out most of my clips. And yeah, so let me just run y'all through this real quick. So in Premiere Pro, how I usually do it, this is my way, not saying this is the correct way, but this is just the way I find it most easy. So in Premiere Pro, what we have, we have, we have two subjects right here, right? I should do a single subject video, but I'm gonna I'm just, I'm just do it. Let's get it. So right now, I take my footage. I already have my green screen footage cut up, right? So with me having my green screen footage cut up, I kind of know exactly where everything is gonna go. I'm gonna play this out real quick. All right, so once you got what you want, you replace with an After Effects composition. So now that we already have the time, before we do any um, keying, this is what I like to do, and this is why I told you, you need DaVinci Resolve. Well, you don't need it, but I use it for my personal reasons. If you want, you can always just get an adjustment layer, and what you have in that adjustment layer, you can do things like put a lumetric color on it, right? And you can deal with your curves and everything that you might need to right now, but I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm gonna go straight into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna color space transform and I'm gonna denoise my footage. So the main goal of this is just getting the shot to look exactly how I look when we shot the video. Like I said, I don't know the right or wrong way of doing this, but this is how I usually do it. So I give me a subject. Since I don't want it extremely colored, I just come in here and uh, get the clip that I rendered out, make sure to copy these settings that you see on my screen right here. The trillions of colors option is key when you're doing this because you wanna keep all your, uh, your information in your clip and stuff like that, so yeah. Now that you got the tutorial clip, let's go find that same clip and let's drag it into DaVinci. And this is fairly easy. What you want to do is you want to come to the color tab. Like I said, this is free. So I believe all of you guys should be able to do this. So once you come to your color tab, you right click, you add a node, make it a corrector. And on this node, I'm going to use my denoise, my denoiser right here. And if you have this in After Effects, you can use this as well. Like, you can use this in After Effects. It really doesn't matter. But you get in here, we do the auto profile and we do progressing. And grab some points. Let's just make this a little bigger. And then we hit apply. Bottom, we got rid of some of that noise. Let's see if we turn it on and off. See the noise in his shirt, his pants, they just seem a little bit smooth. No ditty. So right here, we come here. Type in color space. And right now I'm working on a I'm working on a, a Sony. So for Sony, all Sony's, bro. If you shot this in the flat log profile, you just come to Sony Gamma Three. Uh, S log right seven oh nine. Boom. Are you ready? You feel what I'm saying? You don't need to do nothing more to that. But if your colors do end up somehow looking nasty, um, I think I should rain out through this before, but it really doesn't matter. When you're in here. What you have to do, you have to come to Melon. You have to come to the color management tab, right? And over here in your timeline space, right? Just change this to Rec 709 and your color science to DaVinci YRGB and, you know, ma like match your settings, you know, when you start your project file. So we come here, we got a file, export. No, we come here. And you can just copy these settings. If you use a Sony, you can copy these settings. If you don't, I just I recommend you go uncompressed. 
you know what I'm saying? But here goes my little thing right here. Let's go with a uh, suck clip done. And let me put this in a designated folder. Add to render queue. And then I'm gonna render that out. Now you could just X this out. Come, come where we saved that clip. Now I'm saying if you want to keep it before and after, you can just turn this off and push, pull this in here, but uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to delete it. So with me being here with a denoise clip, and I have a face console. You can go get this from Video Copilot. It's free. So I come in here and I type in key light. And with my key light on, I click some green and it starts already cutting out our characters. But before I worry about anything else, I'm gonna come into my screen map. I'm gonna play with the clip white. And you're gonna click and hold control and start to play with that just a little tad bit. And if you look on the edges, I'm gonna get rid of everything that's white outside of the subject. He has on this teal looking color, right? So we might have to fix a couple of the blemishes with an extra mask around him. So this is what I'm gonna do right now is I might, should I rotoscope that? Yeah, I'm gonna rotoscope his, his, um, his shirt, right? So before we even do any of this other shit, we come in here, we come and grab his shirt. All right, hold up. Come in here, grab his shirt. So now with that rotoscope like that, let's just freeze that bit, right? But this right here is what you call patching up your key. So you're not just like letting key light do all of the work on like one specific part of your um, your layer. You know what I'm saying? Like you really want to give it, you want to give yourself as uh, as much space as possible to, to, to get that subject out. So now we got his shirt and there's not really that many blemishes left around like his, um, his pants area. We're gonna make this like 12. We're gonna refine edge, soft matte. Make this like six. Remember guys, this is the t-shirt that we smoothing and out right here still. So we got smoothing out that t-shirt and now that we got that smooth, see how it's all blended in with the rest of the fucking clothes. And I'm gonna just shift my edges in the negative position just so it's not intersecting with my original uh, thing that I got going on here. So now let's go back to the main layer, right? And let's turn the shirt off real quick. And let's just see if we got anything going on with this subject over on this side. Really, it's just keeping this shit clean, bro. You gotta keep this shit clean and check your screen map. You know what I'm saying? We gonna come to the final result. And as you can see, we might have some of these little green things going on here. So we're gonna screen and shrink, well, we're gonna shrink that just a little bit, maybe to like 0 0.5 to 10. And we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add an advanced spill suppression. Boom, so now with that, we gotta bring down the suppression to like 70%, 75. And let's cut out our subjects real quick. Now we can just take things like a, let's go to layer and add like a new solid. You know what I'm saying? Let's make that solid like, you know, a very noticeable color. So I'm not going to bring out any like weird cut like greens or anything like that. So let's bring that blue in and let's see if there's any holes in his shirt. So was in his, you know, anything like that. Yeah, we don't have no holes. Can we hold up? God, I yeah, see that. Look, see the shirt. But you know what? This is why we fixed the t-shirt because the t-shirt still there. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So now look, we got a perfect, we got a perfect uh, cutout. So now it's time to bring everything into Blender, bro. Before we start Blender, when we get into Blender, we're gonna, it's a couple of settings that I need you guys to just follow by every time we open up a Blender project because it's like, 
you know you get these questions all the time sometimes you might have to lower them depending on what you're putting in there and stuff like that that's why i haven't really made a tutorial on this yet because it's kind of like it's mind-boggling to make one you know what i'm saying like it's not like i'm tracking the scene this is strictly from scratch off the green screen i have to come up with something and yeah but moving forward now that we have our subject um for blender it's cool to render the subject out in 1080 even if you are working in 4k just for the simple fact that when you render in a high sample when you render in high samples it's still going to give you like impeccable quality when you double your um when you double the size of your click stuff like that so it's just for optimization but if you can render in 4k and edit in 4k and everything is processing correctly you feel what i'm saying i recommend you render this out in 4k me i'm not doing that so i come to file i go to export add to render queue and i like to keep things organized so when i come up here and make my png sequence Render with the alpha, trillions of colors. Yeah, resize 1920 to 1080. Press OK. And then I just make myself a folder. And then inside that folder, I just name that subjects. All right, ladies, so if you made it this far, I'm gonna need y'all to drop a like, you know what I'm saying? If you did learn something new, man, just know, man. But anyway, let's keep it going, man. So once you get into Blender, you wanna come in here and uh, let's just press A. You know, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna teach you guys how to use shortcuts today. Press A or click and drag. Press A or click and drag and just hit delete, right? So now let's just start building up our scene after setting some settings. So most of the time when I work and do this type of stuff, I work in cycles, right? I come down, I leave supported, and I change this to GPU compute. I change my noise threshold to 0 0.001. Yep. I make my max samples around 500. And I make this 0 0.07, 256 depending on what I'm about to put in this scene. I already have a scene made for this video, but I'm just gonna make a quick scene. It's gonna be a white background. It's gonna be a car. And what you get from this, you move it forward. But I'm really just showing you like how to get things in here, show you how to light it, and the small trick to get every scene to kind of work the same. I'm gonna just show you how like everything could kind of work the same if you understand these first couple steps. So let me continue, I'm so sorry. Moving forward, motion blur, film, are we gonna do a transparent background? If you have a sky, no. If you don't have a sky, and you're gonna use like buildings or something like that, then yes. This is all, this is a personal preference right here. This is kind of up to you. Performance wise, for high quality purposes, me, I love high quality shit. So I make sure when I use tiles, my tile sizes are the same size as my um, pick tools, which is 256. And I always pick that. Color management, usually, we go with Filmic Log, but I don't know. Blender 4.0 has been like a blessing with this AGX thing. So I go, I've been running AGX and I'm running a very high contrast. And depending on how my lights are looking in the scene, I change my exposure and my gamma. So I always come back to that in the end, feel me? So render region, just so I'm not, not out here fucking myself up. And then we set myself a, a location where I want this video. So, well, this right here doesn't save your video. This it's basically telling you where your EXR files, your render files are gonna go. So I always make me a folder, call it done. So me, make that shit and I leave it right there. I name it, um, what is the name of this shit? Uh, Disturbing the Peace, you know what I mean? I'm gonna just call it DTP done. And then when I, once I do that, I'm gonna accept. And here's come, this is the magic. This right here literally enables you to have multiple passes. You're able to work with your subject you're able to work with your shadows um you're able to work with different types of lights if you rent you can render things out solo multi layers so we come here and then we change the codec oops from zip lossless to dwa lossy um color management follow the scene because we already set that and let me just check my eyes to see if i'm good and i believe i'm ready to start pulling things into my scene before we do that let's even just let me get this past data to you as well you guys might be confused as to what this is but we're only going to be using a couple of these things but whenever you're doing this type of work use passes right 
there's plenty of videos on passes that explain passes way better than I could. I just know how to use them. I really don't know how to explain every last one of these down to the T because I'm still learning this process myself. So when I'm here, I come and I check all of these boxes, except vector, object index, material index. And I come down here, I grab my emission, environment, ambient occlusion. So now when I render, I'm literally ready. I have all my shadows, everything. I can show you guys exactly how one of these clips end up looking once you're finished. So let me save this, right, real quick. We can come. Thank you. All right, so in here, um, you know, with those passes, it's gonna enable you to do things like, all right, this is just a combined pass of um, my last render, and this is the this is the ambient occlusion, which enabled me to add like those shadows, the shadows under the butts and stuff like that. Yeah, um, a mist, mist layer, mist layer, everything, everything is here. We get in the subject. The subject was in the mission, so he was by himself. That's perfect. So, yeah. Now moving forward. Let's just make us a simple scene. Um, if you are new to Blender, two things I recommend. I highly recommend you go get your Blender kit because Blender kit, if you pay for Blender kit yearly, your first year in Blender, and this is me telling you from personal experiences, bro. My very first year in Blender, bro, I learned so much just by not trying to take the time out to model everything. Not saying model is not a necessity. I'm trying to say that it's not important, but if you're doing client work as persistent or consistently as I am, or if you don't even want to be a modeler, you just buy this. Buy it. This is perfect. This, the Sketchfab plugin, and also, you know, just using the other websites like CG Trader, um, Turbo Squid, all of those websites. ArtStation, they have some good creators up there who are like selling their stuff. All you have to do is contact one of them. So if you see something you like, you can go get it from there. Feel me? You have that. And then also, we got Directed 3D by Max Novak. I'm not going to hold you, bro. If you haven't tapped in with it before, I feel, I believe you should tap in with it now. But the Procedural City is literally how I made the big booty. You know what I'm saying? I made the big booty city using Max Novak's plugin. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, if y'all ever, you know, when y'all get up in here, bro, and y'all start figuring out like the ones and twos or how to use this sh yeah, you're going to get right. But I can't tell y'all how to make a scene today. I'm just telling y'all how to get y'all. Y'all subjects and maybe a couple objects into a scene and how to get right and how to render. So here we go. Let's move forward with this. Shit. And I got like a, you can make a colorama by just adding a plane. You grab both of these ends right here. Extrude it in the Z position. And then you grab these two points right here. And hit control B. Go to segments and boost the segments up some. And that's how you make a color rama. But I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna use what the bro gave me. I ain't gonna hold you because I don't like making color ramas. But you know, go to the light studio and we just gonna add us a color rama. Quick, easy. All right. So now that we got us a color rama, let's start setting up camera. Let's get a camera up in here. And you can hit the camera and there's a little green button this is how you activate the camera and if you have a numpad you just press zero and it takes you into the camera view or if you don't have a numpad you just press this this little key right here and it takes you into the camera view so for your camera settings i'm gonna set my depth of field to nothing yet i'm not even gonna lie to you we don't do that till later but we just set it to 24 millimeters since i shot this on the 24 millimeter lens my g series 23 point 24.4 now uh let's add us a vehicle in here let's do things like let's 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 get like a let's get us a rolls royce up in this the blended camera settings have to match your real camera settings in order for you to have some luck with these. so now that you have your car in here let's let's just add an image and these are gonna be your people. Let's go to done. No, let's go to the folder where I saved my subjects, which is going to be. Let me get an image of the plane and let me go find out where I saved this. Subjects, 
subjects uh just press one because we press it this is we import in the image so we're just gonna press one of these and then we're gonna press import um let's hide this car for now and let's go into the render view real quick to see what we're working with now all right we don't have no lights in here y'all see right so let's light this up so let's bring these two right here let's get these boys feet on the ground and Here's a little trick that I usually do. So let's go into this mode real quick. If you come into your, if you come into um, <coughs> come into your camera by pressing this or the zero on the numpad, you can come down to background images and let's like add an image, import, and let's add the first image that we just added, and let's bump this up. Go into this mode. Uh, and if we come up here, I think now yeah, we turn on transparency because we got to see what we're doing. Let's hide our color ramble real quick. Something iota. So I like to match my, my character up. And this is pretty, it's fairly easy. All you do is you come into that little thing. And you match it just like that, to be honest. But let's get these guys animated first. Let's um let's go into the shading tab. And in the shader tab, you're gonna see there is a uh folder. So you click that folder, you hit one of the files, and you press A, you open the image, and as you can see, it gives you the amount of frames that you're using. So you're using about 30 frames. So let's go up here. And as you can see, the clip stops at 30 frames. So let's make the duration of our clip 30 frames. Boom. Be straight. And now you got both of these goofy dancing in the, in the clip. Right? So here's a trick. When you're in here, usually you can just hit the emission on the BSDF. Drive color to color. And now if you change the strap to one, you'll see in the viewport, they actually lit up now, even though we don't have anything in the scene, right? So let's add a sun, light, sun. Let's bring it up. And now you can see we got our subjects in here. And we could probably bring the lights down on these guys just a little bit. I'm giving y'all some cool ideas what to do with this. And let's turn that Rolls Royce back on. All right. So this car is fairly big. So let's make the, instead of making the characters fit for the cars, since we already have our camera stuff ready, let's just scale this car down. Usually when you bring cars in from Blender Kit, they come with an empty and the empty basically controls everything that's going on. So all of these parts that you see down here, if you click one, and you try to move it, you can move it by itself, but it's attached. As you can see, these dotted lines, they indicate that it's attached to this empty over here. So you feel me? Control Z that and you always want to just mess with your empty. Unless if you're experienced and you understand what I'm doing right now, feel me? You could unparent your car and do whatever the you want to do with it but as of right now this is for the beginners so don't delete your empty keep your empty on your car bro stop playing with me so let's move back and let's move this car over to the left a little bit and let's come into the camera view all so we're gonna come into the side view and we're gonna get this up Really just get the car looking really how you want it. Put this car in the air. I have had a fun with it.
Gotta have the big body Benthega in here. You know what I'm saying? Gotta have my boy Asaya looking expensive. So, once you get your scene situated how you want it to look, my friend, right? Here's where things get a little juicy, man. That's, we're not just gonna have this looking all bland like this. Now, you see these guys, right? They, 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 look, they, look, they look pretty ready, but there's no shadows in here. So, let's grab our sun and let's go to the light settings and let's just start shifting the angle of this. And let's make the sunlight play out though. Here we go. Let's grab this sun and let's just start. Up the metallic on this floor. Bring down the roughness a little bit so we could get a reflection on these two people. Yes, sir. Right? So, I don't got that. We could do things like... Ugh. Let's lower the emission on the subjects. We don't want them extremely overexposed. You know, we can do this to them in post. And also, if let's say you want to scale up your person, his feet isn't touching the ground, it's doing all what you crap. Let me show you a little trick real quick. So, you hide your floor, right? With your image still selected. You can highlight in edit mode by pressing tab. You can highlight this thingy, both of these points on the bottom only. Make sure only those two are highlighted. Hit shift S and cursor to select it. And then you come out of edit mode and then come to object with your photos or well, with your image sequence still highlighted. And then just um, set origin to 3D cursor. Feel what I'm saying? And then you'll be able to wait. Let me get rid of this because this confusing the out of me. Oh, we could put it in front. That's fire. Um, now you can scale your people up now. You can make them as big as you want. Big ass monster or little ass dude. Uh, we gonna use little ass dude though, cause... Yeah. So, yeah. Let's turn the colorama back on and let's do things like, let's add more lights in here. Let's not just have this so bland, man. Let's Let's turn this up and let's make sure our subjects feet not let's make sure they not clip in the ground. Let's make sure everything is touching. And since this video is about booties, let's just add. Let's get the collection. Oh, bo booty. Oh, the bull booty. Oh, the bull booty. Bull booty. Oh, booty. And they got the yeeks up in there. <laughs> All right, so now that we got the yeeks up in there, I had a skin texture. And look, this is why I tell y'all, bro. Blender kit is it. All right, so I'm back. And as you can see, I have not one, but I have a few scenes here. So I'm going to take you through the rendering process and I'm going to uh, show you how to composite this. You feel what I'm saying? I got my lights. I got my camera movement. I have my, uh, you know, my extra things that I want in there. You know, I got my subject. Everything is ready, right? So 
we gotta go into our camera view and then we're gonna hit this little folder over here find a place where we want to save it and yeah once we do that we're just gonna hit control and f12 i'm not gonna do that because i already rendered this scene out i already have all my files ready so i'm just gonna go straight to after effects but once you finish rendering out your scene you're good once you have everything rendered you're gonna let's go find our stuff bro let me get my exr file in here all right so exr files they come up first of all they come up big as hell and they come like a png sequence so you just click one file and in after effects it's always going to love you enough to just give you this sequence options and it's already going to be checked so just click import when you get it into after effects you want to right click the clip and then you want to hit interpret footage go to main and change it to 24. and once you change it to 24 you hit new composition from selection so now you have a black clip in there, right? And you're probably wondering like, yo, a Y1, what's going on with my footage? There's a built-in plugin in After Effects called the Extractor plugin used for strictly EXR files. So we're gonna put that on this clip. And you still might ask yourself like, oh my God, there's nothing here. But here are all your passes. Every last pass that I had you select in Blender is here. So we're gonna start off with this combined thing, right? Here goes my background, here goes my car. You know, we could start off by just grabbing, you know, the bugs, stuff, the noise, things like that. You know, we can start off with that, but I'm just gonna take you through the basics of getting this look at how you want it to look. So in the white point, we're gonna change this to 0.5 up until we get our subject in the scene, right? And then, with this background still selected, you can duplicate this and then just come back up to this layer area, hit the ambient occlusion and change this to done. And then you can change the blending mode to multiply and then add like a Gaussian blur of like two a three, just to get rid of a lot of that noise that you see back there. Mm -hmm. You get rid of the noise, but you still have the shadow so it's cool looking those shadows look real good so if it's too dark for you you can just either go here and 0.7 you know and then go to the opacity and bring the opacity down to about 85 percent you know what i'm saying so now you have a fairly good background with some good shadow and then shit like that all right and you can also do this with your mispass pass but all right Come up here, duplicate this clip again, and change it to not environment, but mist. And make sure you press normal. And oh yeah, and make sure all your unmult boxes are checked when you're doing this too. Cause sometimes you get a weird outline on some of your clips. But anyway, press T, change this back to 100%. And this is your mist pass. You really don't get that much out of this, but here's a trick that I learned with this. If you wanna hit this and go to 0.2, all right? Here you go, you have your mess pass. And what you can do with this, right? You can have two of these. You can have one of these to indicate fog and another one to create a fake blur. So I'ma just name these Matt, right? I'ma I'm gonna name this one Matt, duplicate it, bring it to the bottom, and I'ma name this one Mist. And the mist pass, this one is gonna be screen, and this one is just gonna stay off because that's just for information. So on this mist pass now, I could go do things like add a tint. All right, change the color to like, see we already got a red. So if let's say, you know, this is mint, we could add like a blue or a teal type of vibe here to just give some Give some cool looking depth here, right? And then also, if you had your subject in here, for example, let me just get my subject in here. Uh, and let's add the extractor plug into this as well. Combine. And let's put this under the mist. And you, as you can see, the mist is in here. You feel me? But I can show you guys how to multi 
how to add like multiple objects into a scene and composite them right now i'm gonna just show you this background situation and then i'm gonna add him on top but this miss part we're gonna leave this out for right so let's uh let's delete that top one and keep that matte there right so let's light him up let's change him to like 0 0.2 no that's too much maybe 0 0.5 or 6 right and let's add a little metric color and let's go play with the curves a tad bit go into full if you need to and just try to get some darkness out of him you can boost up the curves to get a little more brightness on these lights these shining lights that you have above the booty and the subject and then what you can do with this subject, right? Let's change the color of this because you don't want to get confused. Um, let's duplicate this and let's change this into an ambient occlusion on the subject. And let's do the same thing we did before. Multiply, but this time we're going to use a track map. And we're going to use the very first clip of the subject, which is layer two in my case. So I'm going to hit on the first layer, track map, subject, and then I'm gonna turn my shit back on. Change that back to one, I'm so sorry. And we can add just the curves to this by so. Like I said, bro, I just, I just recently learned this, so this is kinda new to me still, but you know, this is my best way of executing this. So, how do we got that? I also did an ambient occlusion layer, you know what I'm saying? This is, you know, this is just for you to really learn. So, ambient occlusion layer, we just uh, file, import, file. Go to AO, no ditty. You click this. Every last one of these, you gotta interpret the footage. Main, 24, hit OK. And then you can, oh look, take that. put extractor on it and put the AO and this is basically both shots with the ambient occlusion so we could get even more shadows <laughs> so I would just take this and shave it to multiply all right and this one I really wouldn't have it extremely high I would just have the opacity to a lower level all right so once you lower the opacity on this it's time for you to start having some fun this opacity at like 20 27 something percent right and I think we, you know, for tutorial purposes, I'm gonna just hit film me. This is definitely good enough. You feel me? You could get, you can get by with this. So, you know, I'm gonna definitely have like a more uh, informal tutorial on this as we go on. Like I'm gonna do another tutorial in the future on tracking your scene and um, bringing blender objects into real life footage and stuff like that. So just stay tuned, you feel me? It's just from scratch. And there's no like outside environment where we have to like do any extreme light and anything like that. This is why I kind of picked this. So you just understand in each and every step we got going on here. So now we're gonna add an adjustment layer, right? And if you have this effect, I ain't gonna lie, this shit fire, bro. Film convert, bro, this shit is crazy, bro. You feel me? It, it's just lovely. So I like to throw a film convert on top of this before I start to add my emissions, just so I know how dark and how bright my scene is going to come off in the end, you feel me? And then you know, I'll just play with that a little bit. And yeah, so now let's come back to the background, right? Cause I got some emissions in here as well. So if you take this background clip, which is layer five in my case, duplicate, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit emit and that if you solo, it's gonna just show only the lights in my scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the white point to 0 0.2, right? And then I'm gonna add optical glow, right? Whenever you add your lights, all of your lights are in the emission paths. You get to edit them. So I'm just gonna keep the amount around 10 and just boost the size of this and then maybe bring up the amount just a little bit more and then I'm gonna turn this back on and put this to screen and boom we got some emissive lights coming from the car and I seen you feel me and that's kind of like most of the compositing that you can do when you have like a scene that you built in blender you feel what I'm saying there's more to it but it just really varies and depends on like what you're using if you have objects in front of another 
you might have to render just the subject and an object alone and stuff like that you know it's just so much there's so much different ways you could do it but guys hopefully this tutorial was helpful i really appreciate everybody for being patient with me because i definitely was supposed to get to making one of these a long time ago but you know as you go you learn more stuff i definitely just recently learned this method you feel what i'm saying i'm gonna drop the guy's description i'm gonna drop the guy's youtube channel um in the description below uh who told me the the rendering passes you know what i'm saying and stuff like that so um yeah man if y'all enjoyed drop a like comment and subscribe and i'm gonna be back this week with another blender tutorial and i'm gonna be showing y'all how to track them scenes <clears throat> and add some objects into them you feel me so yeah man stay tuned tap into the store i got a whole bunch of stuff up there i got crt overlays 3d overlays and i got preset packs for after effects along with that if you really look and dig deep enough you'll find my blender title tutorials or i'll just make a you know personal pack for that in the future but yeah man i really appreciate everybody you feel me staying tapped in you know supporting and i appreciate everybody buying my sh yeah bro i'm not about to make this about just dropping packs i'm giving y'all real source bro no videographer in new york city or in anywhere is giving y'all this type of material just like this why because it's rare and everybody's gonna sit here and try to gatekeep it just so you don't get on you feel me but nah bro. with j site you gonna get on so i'm gonna holla at y'all man and i love y'all Peace out.